I'd expect. The university stadium isn't keen on bringing weapons inside. Now, let me be very clear here. I'm not in favor of granting police extra rights, but this is a great example of how the police state eventually trickles down to the police themselves. And when we talk about the NFL, this is the same NFL who had snipers at Super Bowl 48 in the stadium and also the same NFL who banned an ad for Daniel Defense because it depicted, quote, firearms, ammunition, or other weapons. Meanwhile, Super Bowl halftime commercials are still filled with excessive gunplay and disregard for collateral damage. One of the major sponsors at the big game this year was Pepsi. Pepsi, who underwrites events pushing gun control. So to the police, the military, or anyone else being asked to participate in the gun grab, remember that once they have a generally disarmed populace, they're coming for your guns next. You can find more reports at Infowars.com. The police and National Guard going street by street, house to house. We need to make sure, too, that whenever we knock on doors, people refuse to leave. We need to make note, call it in. They say there are no orders to use force, just strong persuasion, sometimes entering open houses with guns drawn and instructions to disarm anyone inside. You say guns, guns will be taken? Yeah, no one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. Well, earlier today, we tried to contact the FCC after one of their commissioners wrote a very critical article of a program that they have coming up where they're going to embed themselves into local news stations. And we're concerned about that. So we call the FCC. Stay tuned. We're going to have that report right after the break. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formulation fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. As Paul Joseph Watson pointed out yesterday, a lot of us have grave concerns about the FCC's plans to send researchers into news organizations in South Carolina. They're going to begin that this spring. Now, he pointed out yesterday that a justice group warns of Obama's plan to put government monitors in newsrooms, and he was talking about the American Center for Law and Justice. Now, he also referred to an earlier op-ed piece from one of the FCC commissioners that he wrote in the Wall Street Journal on the 10th of February. And in that, the commissioner said that he's concerned about federal researchers grilling reporters, editors, and station owners about how they decide which stories to run. Now, this is part of what they call a 
multi-market study of critical information needs. And this is the way they described the study in their own writings. They said, in order to assess whether government action is needed to ensure that the information needs of all Americans are being met, including women and minorities, it is necessary to understand how the public acquires critical information, how the media, media ecosystem operates to provide this information, and what barriers exist to participation. And so that begs the question. It begs a lot of questions. First of all, how much are they going to spend? Are they going to intimidate people? We have to be very concerned about this because we've seen recently that the federal government says they are removing the barriers of restriction to Voice of America and Radio Free Europe. They were always prohibited after they were created at the beginning of the Cold War. They were prohibited from operating domestically. Now they say they're going to operate domestically. Is this something where they're getting intel to see how they can compete with real news organizations? Are they going to intimidate people? What is their definition? How are they going to measure whether information needs are being met or not? These are questions that we had, so we called the FCC, and here's what we got. Dan Margolis. Uh, yes, hello, Mr. Uh, Margolis. I'm David Knight with Free Speech Systems. I had some questions about the multi-market study of critical information needs. Uh, do you have a moment that I could ask you a couple questions? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to answer any questions. You're certainly more than welcome to contact our Office of Media Relations, though. Oh, okay. You were listed on the FCC press release as the person to contact. Uh, <coughs> yes, and with respect to uh, press inquiries, we're directing them now to our Office of Media Relations. Okay. Can you give me that information? You give me uh, one second. I sure can. Phone number is 202 418 0503. It's 202 418 0503. That's correct. Okay, great. And, and just one quick question How come that changed? Uh, how, how come you decide not to feel those questions anymore? Uh, because uh, we've just decided to route all of the media inquiries through that office uh, for uniformity of response. I see. Were you having a lot of inquiries, or? Uh, a few. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. May I help you? Yes. This is David Knight from Free Speech Systems. Okay, David Knight. How can I help you? Yes. And, and I'm talking to who is it? What's your name? My name is Sharon Hurd, and I'm just getting the messages together so okay. that I can forward them. Oh, okay, so what were you calling about? Uh, what I'm calling about is the multi-market study of critical information needs. It's going to be taking place in South Carolina. Can you give me any information about that? Okay, let me send an email to the director and deputy director and the press secretary, and one of them will be calling you back. Okay, and, and my question specifically is I have some questions about uh, the, the program itself and the study model. I also had some questions, since they're going to be looking at print media, we are not directly involved with something with the FCC in terms of we don't directly broadcast out of this location. We do have radio shows that go out, but it's other, other stations that are broadcasting that. So we're not directly under the FCC's jurisdiction, but then neither are the print media companies that they're going to be studying. So our, my question was, uh, will we be involved in this or how can we get involved in this? Okay. Someone will be getting back with you shortly. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Mark Rickfield. Yes. Hi, this is David Knight with Free Speech Systems. How are you? Hey, how are you? Doing fine. Thank you for talking to me. I yeah. I have, so how, how are we talking right now? Uh, right now I'm recording this. Is that okay? Uh, no, no. I mean, I can give you a statement. Um, I um, recording for broadcast. Yes, yes. Uh, you don't. No, yeah. no. I'm, I'm not going to uh, be on a recorded broadcast. I can send you a statement if you like, and I can explain to you uh, what this is about. 
Well, actually, I, I just thought maybe I could get an honest back and forth question and answer about the nature of this information needs study and where it was going to be done and what, how much it cost and some things like that, but you're not prepared okay, to. Okay, well, sure, I'm just not prepared to, to um, do a, uh, you know, I had to get clearance to do an interview on, on the air and so forth, so um, sorry. Okay, all right. Well, thanks. Do you That's... want me to send you the statement? Sure, yeah, send David? us your press release. That'll be fine. What's your uh, email address? My email address is davidk at infowars.com. I got it. All right. Thanks a lot, David. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now, this is the email that he sent me. He said, by law, the FCC must study the ability of entrepreneurs and small business to compete in the media marketplace, and the commission does not and will not interfere in newsrooms or editorial decision making. And they also sent us a document reaffirming those claims to one of the congressmen who questioned them about this, Fred Upton. He's the chairman of the Committee on Energy and Commerce. Now, notice how they've changed this. First, this was about making sure that the information needs of women and minorities were being met. Now they're only talking about the ability of entrepreneurs and small businesses to compete in the media marketplace. If that's really their concern, why do they come down so hard on micro-broadcasters? Look at some of the penalties that are involved for micro-broadcasting. If you're caught doing that, you can get $10,000 for a single violation or a single day of operation, up to a total maximum of $75,000. How about the barrier of operation being the FCC themselves, the Federal Non-Communication Commission? They totally stonewalled us, just as they did the researcher on Sandy Hook that we talked to yesterday. It's become standard operating procedure for everyone in the government to act as if they are the CIA and to act as if they're the CIA. So that's why we're very concerned about the government saying they're going to use Voice of America here locally. Now, of course, there is a way to get your information needs met. We believe the best way to do it is to support Prison Planet TV. If you become a subscriber, you can share that with up to 10 other people at the same time when you watch the nightly news as it's being broadcast. You can also share documentaries with people, and of course, it helps to keep independent media alive. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. And the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. InfoWarsStore.com.